what's up everybody, my name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks or new cards to play around with and that last part is exactly what we're going to be doing today because the latest patch, patch 10.6, actually added two new cards, one for Yennefer and one for Triss and as you might have noticed, today we're going to be looking at the Yennefer card. We're going to be combining Yennefer Illusionist with our Shoop Creation deck from uh, a few weeks ago um, into a brand new Double Cross Assimilate deck. Um, we'll be showing that off in a minute. The first thing that I want to really talk about today is why I have been AMA for a few weeks. Uh, I know it's been uh, a while since uh, there has been a new video on the channel. I apologize for that. That was because I got quite a big promotion at work which brought a whole bunch of extra work to my, uh, my table there. And uh, I, I just didn't have the time to do anything else. And last weekend I was away with friends as well. So uh, there have been, uh, there's been a lot of things going on in my personal life. Uh, but now we should be back. We're going to be doing some great stuff. And I will also be joining the Merchants of Novigrad podcast really, really soon. More on that uh, later on, I'm assuming. You'll see that on Twitter passing by as well. If you want to talk on Twitter, that's D-R-O-V-N-U-T, still Trovinet over there as well. So uh, without further ado, let's head into the deck builder. So as I said before, this is a really, really similar deck to what we used before in the Shoops Creation deck. The only difference being is that we swapped out the, um, the Mushy Truffle for Yennefer Illusionist. And Yennefer Illusionist is the card that I want to really highlight here. Otherwise, the only thing I needed to change was that I changed Shalemar for spores so just to have a reset option there but that was the only real change I did uh, aside from swapping Mushy Truffle for Yennefer Illusionist so I'm not going to go through each and every single card as we usually do just in the interest of time a little bit if you want to see all the explanation for all these cards you can also check out my Shoops creation deck at the end of the video or in the description down below uh, likewise for this deck list by the way there's going to be a link to the play grant website in the description of this video so you can go there check out the uh, the deck list and import it in your own game when you do so don't forget to upvote the list first because uh, all support is always appreciated of course but as i said we're going to be checking out this card first yennefer illusionist four power for 12 provisions and on deploy you spawn yennefer's illusion on this row uh, Yennefer's Illusion is a 4 power token with unique art, which is really, really cool art. We'll be seeing that later on, I'll just highlight it in the example matches. And she also has a passive ability where the first time you spawn a unit on your side of the battlefield each turn, you damage the lowest power enemy unit by the spawned unit's base power. So, if there's a 1 power unit at the other side of the board, you kill it immediately because of the 4 damage that you automatically do, and you boost yourself by one, so that's 10 points on deploy at the very least. The higher the lowest enemy unit is, the more points this is going to be. The perfect way, of course, to deal with this is having a four hour enemy unit be the lowest unit on the other side of the board, and then kill it, of course, in one go, which would net you 13 points on deploy. But this is also an engine, so every card you spawn uh, afterwards, so the first one in every turn, will also give you uh, the damage on the lowest enemy unit. This is not random, so it is the base power of the unit that you spawn and um, hitting the lowest power enemy unit, so you know what you're going to hit. Um, creation abilities also work, which is why this deck actually functions really well with the Yennefer Illusionist. So every time you create a new unit, whether that's true or so, whether that's Shoop, because Shoop you create as well, uh, Braten's Coup de Grasse, Rune Mage, all of those generate new cards, Bribery, um, and even Imperial Diplomacy, uh, even Duchess Informant also spawns new cards. Um, all those cards will give you extra stuff. Um, well, extra stuff, I mean extra damage on the other side of the board. Um, so it works really well with Assimilate, and I haven't really seen it being used in a very basic, well, not basic, very, very interesting assembly deck i should put it that way um without further ado again if you want to see what all these cards do in detail i have a detailed description of that in our previous video so the shoops creation video um but we're going to be heading straight into the example matches this time all right first up imprisonment imprisonment against my assembly deck that might be good or not no call to start with 
Um, and no spying tag or blind unit either. You always get rid of a, the illusionist, because in round one at least, because he doesn't really do anything there. Lock might be useful. Banish, maybe. So I'll, I'll get rid of the emissary and we get Colvade, so that's good. Since we start, I need to keep Imperial Diplomacy, so I'm gonna get rid of Squirrel. And we get, okay, then a third coat. Jan Kalfu, Jan Kalvade. Just to put all my good cards on top. And it's a good starting card anyway. Very high base power as well, so that kind of defends against uh, the big bad sword. Alright, we get the Blightmaker to start. You use Yennefer already. How many creation cards do I have? Not a lot, two at the moment. Um, I also don't have Coup de Grasse, so Cantayala is a bit of a crapshoot at the moment. Uh, but once they thin the second time, I might actually use that. Could Bratens into the Blightmaker. I just don't have anything to put up top, aside from maybe Rune Mage, but it's going to be on top already. Let's Imperial Diplomacy and do... Aha! Top three cards. Okay, that then. Oh boy, that's one of those decks. It's one of those decks. I saw double Kingslayer. That's not good. Okay, boost an enemy unit. I could do the same thing, but I now know there's a crap card on top of their deck. So I don't really want to do that. Let's do Jennifer Illusionist. There we go. Let's grab that round one. Vigo's Muzzle. It actually got spying. Does that mean that it's in my card pool now? I'm actually not sure that you gave spying to. Well, what happens if I... So I'm, I'm going to do something really weird. I'm going to purify it. And then lock it again. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But I'm purifying and locking it again. So that I can use it myself in a minute. Wait, is that a mage? No. That's weird. Oh, she only hit two targets then, I suppose. Um... Next up is Tana Turncoat. I'm gonna spy Yennefer again. So I'm 100% sure that I grab that because I don't wanna lose that. Jan Kalvate. That's really good because now that good cards are on top. So I can actually be the clown that I am and use Kantayella and grab Filterforts. Yeah. Filterforts. Jan Kalvate is gonna be a big one on top again. So there we go. Um, I am really far behind. <laughs> there we go, we get a pass. Do I want to grab this round? I would need to invest heavily to grab this round. So Arto would get me the round, I think. So yeah, I only need 13 points. Yennefer is already 13 points. So Arto would get me the round. But that's not, that's not fun, is it? I'm gonna damage Yennefer Illusionist here and then Beatrice. Uh, Duchess Informant, that's gonna trigger Assimilate. Blightmaker, so if it was a mage, spawn the Guardian on this row. Let's put the, um, the Rune Mage up top. And that gives me just enough points. I didn't need to use anything fancy. I used my own cards, and I drained two of the best cards out of the deck. So I got one for myself, and then got the Prophet out as well. Seems like it's balanced that way. Um, I can get rid of the lock here, and just go with Yennefer's Invocation. Yeah, let's finish redrawing with this. And then of course I'm gonna pass here. I just don't wanna risk anything. That's good. That is good. I got most of my gold cards out of the deck before they started to banish, but I knew that the two Kingslayers were in their deck. Illusionists, what is in their graveyard right now? Nothing particularly useful. So I'm gonna try Artvein Tortoise. Maybe even get rid of Emissary here. Okay. That's eight points. 
hunting pack. So that's a brick. Good. I'm gonna start slow as well. <laughs> that is too bad, isn't it? Um, file of Forbidden Knowledge. That's just eight points that I can use whenever I want. Not a blight maker giving them extra points. I should have put something on the board there, but that's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna... I should have artoed into Yennefer earlier, but there we go. There we have it. Yennefer into Arto, and that's also gonna kill that two-point guard over there. And I'm gonna boost... Um, am I gonna boost Yennefer? I don't really need to, I think. They can lock her regardless, so whether I boost her or not, doesn't really matter. Yennefer's invocation, and I don't have Kantarella anymore. Could that be an option for me to add spying to that Yennefer that they play? That could come from Rune Mage. So for now, I'm gonna just do Duchess Informant into Blightmaker over here. Do I put a mage up top or not? Yeah, let's just put a mage up top. There we go. So now we get a lock on our toe. I'm gonna play Rune Mage regardless. I'm gonna try the Dustbook Runestone again. I could get... Yeah, Kingslayer. I'm gonna banish Yennefer that way. Yeah. Playing a little bit of their own game there. There we go. That's gone. Um, there we go. And I need to play the file next turn. Okay. So bribery into Vilge Forts. I think. Yeah, there's no bigger cards. Vilge Forts in the front. I get another lock out of that. And then I'm gonna do this. There's nothing locked. But trees and give spike to an enemy unit and damage adjacent units by its power. Yeah. That's gonna be eight points. Like this, and then I need to put this on the Guardian, because otherwise I'm gonna lose value. Okay. Definitely still in the game. And destroy a locked unit there. I could do that as well, by the way. So I could do Shoop into locking Shoop. Yeah. Shoop into locking a unit. I'm on a coup de grace. Um, this guy, Vanamar. So that's gonna kill the Guardian. That's or not. Fine. Um, now I can coup de grace Vanamar. And destroy the hunting pack. I think we got this. Got one more big removal card. And I'm definitely gonna gonna take that away. Definitely gonna take that away. There we go. And that's it, I think. Should have killed the guardian there. So that's gonna be just eight points. And two times three damage, so it's fine. Twelve points ahead. Okay. There we go. On our first match. And next up is hand buffing. Okay, hand buffing, it's important that I grab round one here. Um, I actually get Calvate, so that's good. Also get Rune Mage. I have a unit that can add spying. Emissary can go. I don't need Squirrel, I think. No, there's no Echo cards, nothing from the graveyard. So I can kick that. I need Tourney Joust, and I think I need Mage Infiltrated as well. I could Purify um, something away as well. I'm gonna keep it like this. It seems like a good start. Uh, and I can just toss Palfate as the first move to stay ahead a little bit. So Dunka is most likely gonna be the first card. So we get our first hand boost, second hand boost, and possibly a third. As in T-H-I-R-D, not T-U-R-D. English is complicated. Boost and... Wait, what's that new? Boost an unboosted unit in your hand by the number of boosted units in your hand. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool card. Yennefer might actually be interesting here as well. 
I don't have any boosted cards in my hand. So I'm just going to do Rune Mage. Rune Mage into a Squire's Hell card. I usually just go for something that is perfect for the amount of... Uh, ooh. Choose an enemy unit. If its base power is higher than self, gain 3 armor. Yes! Yes! And then we can barricade that to hell. There we go. Okay, there we have Dunka. The Dunka is gonna get uh, purified. So purify that away. And then look harass. And that synchronizes very well with the Mage Infiltrator in a minute. Or we could just use... Um... Oh boy. No, I need the Death Blow on the Giant Slayer if I want to get that Resilience going. That's going to be bleeding. That blow needs to come from the Giant Slayer. Kind of forgot about that. But I could put... It's a waste of points, isn't it? Having this Resilient would be really cool. Um, and there's no pressure in killing Duncan now. So what would be the best option then? I could Coup de Gras Dunka, but I don't have any Square Tell cards in my hand, so that doesn't really help. Uh, I can't copy anything. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. This is gonna be the better option. Just get that to my side. I know it doesn't give the, the Giant Slayer resilience, but it is what it is. We have a Triss fan, but also with Yennefer and Siri. Wow, okay. Definitely not OP. It's not going to be ideal because she didn't get the dead blow, but she did get 12 points out of that. Um, I'm going to get two points on the next turn as well, if she survives. Hawker supports. So that's boosting an allied unit in hand by one, probably three, probably six in total. As you can see by this monstrosity. God damn it, I'm gonna have to put spying on something that I want to put spying on. Or... Because this is three points and one thing that I hand boost. But I think right now, a tourney joust is probably even the better option. Yeah, just tourney joust on the... Watcher of the Valley, I think, yeah. Oh boy. Sh Sheldon Skaggs. Well, that was aggressive. Very aggressive, holy crap. And that's gonna give them last say if I don't do anything about this. So then I turn code onto Sheldon Skaggs. I'm gonna put this out. Yeah, Geralt. Definitely Geralt. There we go. And kill Sheldon Skaggs. I need that round one. I can't give hand boosting round one. That's just not something you do. But I fear I'm gonna have to. <laughs> this is not looking good. Double bountiful like harvest. And I can't even grab Simlos now. So what they had in hand was Simlos. I, I always forget to keep that in mind. Simlos, of course, the um, fork was in hand. But other than that... See, that would have been ideal to use the ranged ability. Or, yeah, that was just complete luck, I suppose. So do, can you... No, too random. Too random, my ass. Um, okay, I think I still got this. I guess that's going to trigger your simulate. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I don't need to use the Tenant Turn Coat here. So I'm literally bleeding now. So Royal Decree. Probably into something crappy, I would think. So Torque is going to be humongous at the moment, by the way. He got so much hand boosting. That I'm not going to be able to do much against him, I think. Okay. So yeah, that's more hand boosting even. That's going to boost Torque. I'm just calculating whether it's better, so... If I take the Duchess Informant, I'm going to get two extra points. Uh, one extra point. While I get one extra damage from, yeah, I'm going to do it like this. Um, so, could it cross? 
on Balbatana Archer immediately and then use her ranged ability to get two extra dead eyes. Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's good. That's good. I was afraid that it was going to end differently, but with the leader ability, we managed to pull the first round for us. Because otherwise, I would have had to play Arto, and that would have been really bad. But now, now I got options. Do I want to play Coup de Grasse again? I don't think so. I want to get my other good card, so let's finish redrawing there. And just pass. It's going to give them a more hand boosting even, but I don't care. I really don't care. I needed to get that final say just to get uh, Yennefer Invocation on that final card, whatever it is. And then we get another Harker support. Yeah, that's going to be another six points in hand. Yeah, hand boosting is really strong, but they need to grab round one. Because they keep building up points, and especially since, since uh, Sheldon is already gone. Can't is for the memes, isn't it? I'm not going to do Can't could a cross might be useful. What else is there? Nothing, basically. I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm gonna keep it like this. If they play something big now, I can just say that card is mine now. So that's more hand boosting. Please play something humongously big. Because I can take that for myself right now. Which is another advantage of going Winning round one. Oh, that's not really big, is it? That's not really big, is it? I was literally thinking right now, what if I can do something with that? No. So two, that does give me 14 points still. Um, so it is still the better option. Yeah, it is still the better option. Um, so shoot mage into um, move a random unit to the opposite row. So that's 14 points. It's going to be the better option. Because they lose 6, I gain 6. So it's 8-0 at the beginning of the first round. Okay, I'm obviously going to grab that. Giving us also some hand boosting. And even double hand boosting if I want to, because I can put a grass that. Um... I'm gonna put across it. Whatever they're gonna play is not gonna be as useful for me to copy than just this. So there we go. Double hand boosting. And it's gonna become triple hand boosting. Although it's not gonna be useful at that point, so should probably just wait and see what comes up next. So that's just 3 damage. That still survives. I need to get the Seminate Engines on the board. So this onto the Hawker Smuggler. And that's just going to keep boosting Arto. Arto is, is going to be a big boy. Arto is going to be a really big boy. But I think I got this. And that's all because you really need to win round 1 against hand boosting. Because that final card is going to be in the 20s, 30s. There we go, there's an Aglaïs. So that's 16. I am not going to be baited into that. Uh, so bribery. Oh boy. Yeah, bribery into Geralt. There we go. Bye, Aglaïs. I forgot that they had Geralt in that deck. That's probably not the best card to include if you can get your card stolen. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, That's a big torque, isn't it? And I don't, don't have any benefit of playing Arto now, so I'm just going to grab so 28 torque. I've seen higher, but still, that was a juicy torque. I think I got this. Oh boy, an 18 point Geralt. I might not have this. Holy shit. Um, so our toe is 11. Sheldon is actually better. Sheldon is 6. That's. Oh, it's gonna be enough. Holy crap, that was closer than I thought it was gonna be. 
Damn. Damn. Yup. That was, that was really close. GG. Wow. And on that bombshell, we're going to end it here. As I said before, the link to this deck is in the description down below. So you will be redirected to playgwent.com. Don't forget to upvote it there. You can import it in your own game as well from there. Very fun deck, giving you a lot of options to deal with what your opponent throws at you. It's not probably the most competitive deck out there, but uh, if you like it, let me know in the comment section down below. If you have ways to improve this deck, also let me know in the comment section down below. Because remember, that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. Uh, and with that being said, if you want to talk any further, you can do so in the comment section as well, or talk to me on Twitter, and that is still at Trovenut, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. So uh, thank you enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye, and stay nutty.